I mean, I'm feeling the results are better than the way it feels at the moment. It's hugging the line, but I'm definitely not. It's, it's not firing in the right sequence. So there's something, something out. I'm not quite getting the, the transition like, towards the target. It doesn't feel like it's hanging back. It feels like it's almost, almost too much effort to go up. Yeah. do first loading and the unloading profile of the right foot and the right leg so we've got the feel of when we are externally rotating and the rate of it how are you actually moving off that right leg and using that propulsion this way that way how are you directing this movement i.e the forces you're creating how are you transferring them through the body to create the hand path you want at the minute it's good it's a bit more i mean the wind's up a bit it's a bit more spinning than i normally see it now when you do this i want you to keep your left foot square keep your pelvis square now so there's you're not letting your pelvis rotate with it the pelvis goes forward it's the knee that collapses and the left hip that shifts and hikes so you can come off this back foot you push off it the heel will lift right to allow you to keep this pelvis can you bring it in bring it in bring it in yeah, yeah. Hold, mate. bring it in this, so this needs to so your hips your belt buckle should be forward yes that's it now that that collapse good so you've got a big internal rotation right there so it looks like that yeah see so the pelvis like that yeah yeah so this is a loading and then we've got to unload from there we know already you've got this triple extension because what you were feeling earlier you told me it was feeling a little bit too early extended yeah, yeah. so early extension in our terms is an extension of the right side too much yeah. okay which kind of locks out the rotation a bit that's going to happen at the right time. So, that's in the middle of the midfoot. You're going to just feel your pressure shift through yeah. the foot to rotate the ankle. Now, the move, we've got to basically repronate. Then we can resupinate. Okay. What, we're, what you're doing is going straight into a yeah. resupination. So, you're like supinated or inverted, really, yeah. then trying to move into a, pro a supination. It's just locking out the leg, it's resisting the rotation of the pelvis in this direction whereas once you start to get that that feeling okay now this can push look at that that's happening before i rock the board forward yeah. whereas you'd have gone already before it goes anterior before it goes forward pronating now what happens is now it can track off towards the first and second met head and you can push off that first met head right so it's almost like as it, it pronates earlier then kind of recently. Yeah, yeah, it's, got to, goes it's again. got to yes. So it's going it's externally rotating, then it's internally, and then you can go and then you'll externally rotate. Well it, it's it's still internally rotated, but it's externally rotating. Because yeah. you need you need to come back onto the pressure point of the big toe. To yeah, get. I mean you don't really need to lose that tripod. You can you might lose the first met head, that's fine, but yeah. then got to, you you need that first met head back down. Yeah, to be able to But to get it down, you're push. pronating to get it back down instead of using supination yeah, yeah. or trying to supinate yeah. because otherwise you've not got a hip yeah. drop because what actually happens is when you internally rotate this actually drops it's not the same as the stretch we're getting an eccentric load by hiking the hip when you're doing this and hiking that's fine but you're just stretching out this complex here which is going to help you use it for supination so yeah that's better different feel yeah that's brilliant. Let the knee collapse when it when, let the knee collapse when you go in pronation. Let it knee collapse more. It'll go. Let it rotate internally. That's it. Because when it when it moves in, you're going to be able to direct that force vector better. If it's here, that's good. But you've directed it through the, more this in this direction. We want to push to direct the body this way. So we're pushing that way. It's like throwing a ball. Look at the knee. Yeah. It's not going to be out there. Yeah. You've just over exaggerated yeah. essentially yeah. so what you've done is you've gone more from this way which was a pelvic sway yeah. Yeah. so now you've got this which is fantastic yeah. but you've just gone too far i yeah. think as you i think as that your foot functions sense. better as well it's allowing you to do it and you're probably just using it too much it's a good sign but that's still not collapsing enough yes then you can go good that's it so there's a pelvis movement with it so the knee never never comes like kind of outside no. No, it never goes. The, it never goes. Tour, never really go. Never goes outside the midline. No. Really, it goes down the midline, but it, it follows the talus. That's now setting up the conditions for resupination. But look how the pelvis. Look at the hip. It's going into flexion. 
Yeah. When that's in a natural collapse, it's in flexion. If it's end range of flexion already, so I'm in flexion, but I'm almost neutral, so I'm still in flexion, but if I've not got much range left, I've not got anything really. So I need to be more flexion in a pronation, which allows me to resupinate and extend everything. Because I'm here, as I extend now, I'm gonna rotate. If I'm already elevated, and, I'm already, and I've hit end range a little bit, with my, I'm kind of, yeah. that's why, yeah. then your chest pulls it through and your knee finishes like that sometimes. Yeah. If you were gonna throw this beanbag into the ground from a golf back swing, you'd be, there, you'd be like this, and then to get the power, yeah, yeah. And look where the hand path's tracking. Down. I'm still flexed. Yeah. All levers are still ready to go. But if I'm already spent with the extension yeah. there, yeah. You don't think of golf swing. Think about an actual throw into here. Yeah. Feel where it goes. You are back here. Don't be in your golf position. So it's like you'd be here if you. Yeah, you'd be here if you were throwing it. Yeah. Into the ground. Yes. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, good. It's loaded then. So you're loaded in pronation, ready to resupinate. Yeah. Throw it a bit further forward this time. That gives you more of a linear kind of angle with your hand path. Yeah. Different feel? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Feel? Yeah, a little bit. You can see it. Sorry. Don't mind if, if I push it like three or four yards right at target and it's just it's, it's them ones that I don't mm. see. You might have just been with that having stolen your hips there, stolen your sequence to get in a slightly early release. So it's you've been fighting yeah. that early rotation with the face. Whereas when you're doing this and then you're going later, the sequence yeah. fires later. So you're still in your flexions for longer, yeah. then it extends, that's when you get the rotation, yeah. the rate of rotation goes up. You know what those two they felt they felt talk different. about that talk around about the shaft. You're storing it for longer, that leverage. This is potential moving into kinetic. Yeah. Don't go, don't want to be going too early with it, which means you've got to use that lower body. So, when, if you want to so go long, too early with? With this release, which means you've got to go earlier with that. You've got to load for longer. Right, okay. Yeah. Which allows you to store it for longer in the ground and then use it later with your resupination. Yes. Well done. Yeah. So using the ground, that springs back. Yeah, yeah. It was all too rigid, too early. It was like you were you were locking out earlier, uh, locking out too early. When you're in pronation, it's soft, loaded and soft. Footprints spread. Now you can use the footprint. Yeah. Now you can go up, and it all stabilizes. It stabilizes as you're going up the chain. Yeah. The danger is that this is very close to where you used to be with your pelvic shift yeah. because you used to cheat it. Yeah. You're cheating the system, so you've got to make sure that it's coming from the ground and not the pelvis. Otherwise you're just using the pelvis to shift your pressure and lower body's inactive really. Yeah, that was better. So you're moving into a place where you, you can then start to extend yeah yeah that's beautiful so less spin yeah just because your dynamic loss a bit down also your sweet spots traveling yeah. down still then or more down nearly I mean if that's, if that's as bad as it's going to get, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. But that was just a consequence of doing the very similar thing to what I was doing before. Yeah, it's, it's like, when I've played, 
my best in that period of time when it was off. Yeah. If you love the coaching, but you're not able to get a lesson and want to experience the transformation for yourself, the closest thing you can do to get a lesson is by a Zen GRF Infinity training system and experience the same things that you're seeing my pupils go through in a lesson and a two hour download of all the exercises that enable my pupils to tap into those forces and find their most natural, efficient golf swing.